kosher and respected Saturday as the Sabbath. The Judeo-Christians differed from traditional Jews only on one belief, that Jesus was the Messiah. His job as Messiah was to liberate Jerusalem from the Romans and bring world peace. I traveled from Jerusalem to where the Dead Sea Scrolls were found in Qumran, a dry plateau about a mile inland from the shore of the Dead Sea. I met with Professor Robert Eisen, who told me that Qumran supported various communities starting some 2100 years ago. But scholars are loath to identify Judeo-Christians with the Dead Sea Scrolls found in the caves here around Qumran. And then what do the scholars do? They come along and tell us, oh, people like Isaac don't know what they're talking about. Oh, there's nothing there, nothing interesting, nothing to do with Christianity. This is a much earlier group. You can go to sleep, folks, and forget about it. Then we came along and said, no, folks, wake up. This is not just an earlier group. This is a contemporary group. In fact, this is an aboriginal Christian group here. Eisenman says that James, the brother of Jesus, ran things for the Judeo-Christians here at Qumran. His theory is one that many scholars can't swallow. Nonetheless, he says he can uncover an early Christianity that has been hiding in plain sight. How can he do it? It's complex, but it goes something like this. One, re-examine the ancient texts. Two, compare in detail the texts with the Christian Bible. And three, identify an archaeological landmark. By building a detailed comparison of ancient texts with the Christian Bible, Eisenman says he can draw a treasure map and identify a landmark that physically places James at Qumran 2,000 years ago. And that may change the way we look at Christianity. His method starts with a new examination of the Dead Sea Scrolls. We're looking across into the most important cave found, Cave 4. That is the library cave. There were literally tens of thousands of fragments found in that cave, just piled up in a huge, unruly manner. The famous Dead Sea Scroll. Absolutely. We live in miraculous times. Out of nowhere comes this beautiful material that tells us all about this movement. In the Dead Sea Scrolls, Eisenman says he's found references to James, the brother of Jesus, also known as James the Just. And we know that every time in the Qumran materials that you see the word just one or righteous one, the interpretation is the righteous teacher. So there is a leader in the Dead Sea Scrolls called the just one or the righteous one. Do you believe the teacher of righteousness is James? Yes. Why do you think that? Because everything in his doctrine, everything that we identify with him, everything that we know about him makes it clear that his thinking is parallel or part of the kind of group we have here. We have one basic messianic movement out here, and this is the center of it. If Eisenman can place James at the center of it all, he can unveil a form of Christianity that has been lost for 2,000 years. It would mean that the Dead Sea Scrolls contain some of the earliest writings of the Jesus movement. And we can see them as they were. Yes. It's all in their literature. They're righteous. They're very imaginative. They're messianic. They don't believe in turning the other cheek. They don't love their enemy. They wish a final apocalyptic judgment on all the people who are destroying Palestine, the Israelites, and all the people around them. But most scholars call the group that lived at Qumran the Essenes, and the group that followed James the Ebionites. These scholars believe that the Essenes wrote the Dead Sea Scrolls, not James's Ebionites. But Eisenman tells me to look a little closer at the evidence. He believes that many of the Essenes and the Ebionites were one and the same. And that means they were Judeo-Christians. I don't even know if there's someone else who would say, hey gang, you read about the teacher of righteousness? That's James, the brother of Jesus. That's the Ebionites. You're reading there the original Jesus movement right. before it's been tampered with. Before it's been, yes, overwritten. That's what you believe. Oh, absolutely. Eisenman points out that there is a letter in the Dead Sea Scrolls that scholars call MMT. It's a letter that just may be greased by the fingerprints of James. That makes Eisenman pretty excited. It's a letter. I like to call it a, a letter on works righteousness. Was found here? found in cave four. And what it is, a letter to a foreign king of some kind that needs tuition in the law of uh, Moses. They're telling a king how to 
how to keep the law of Moses. But there are converts in northern Syria who do need tuition. MMT, to my mind, is a Jamesian letter to one of these rulers laying out the things that are required of them. Eisenman has compared the MMT letter found at Qumran with a letter at